If you are a patient with long COVID or with myalgic encephalomyelitis, also known as chronic fatigue syndrome, then you will know just how awful it can feel when you are in an episode of post-exertional malaise, sometimes also referred to colloquially as a crash. But did you know that one of the reasons why it feels so awful is that your muscle fibers can actually die during a crash. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about a recent trailblazing study that found exactly that in the muscles of long COVID ME-CFS patients. But first, if you're new to this channel, this is a place where I aim to present accessible, simplified explanations of the research into ME-CFS and long COVID so that you can be empowered to understand your condition better. It is also a place where I aim to talk about the treatment strategies that I have tried as an ME-CFS patient in order to improve my condition. So the study that I'm talking about today came from the Netherlands and it was published in December of 2023. The title is Muscle Abnormalities Worsen After Post-Exertional Malaise in Long COVID and it was by Appleman and colleagues. And so this study really attempted to do something very interesting and something that's very hard to do, to actually measure what changes are taking place in the muscles, in the bodies of long COVID slash ME-CFS patients. And indeed, the authors of the study say that the illnesses are essentially the same, to see what's going on in their muscles and bodies during a crash, during post-exertional malaise. A hard thing to attempt because what ME-CFS patient wants to be examined when they are in the middle of post-exertional malaise. But this is precisely what 25 brave long COVID patients volunteered to do. In addition, the results in this patient group were contrasted with 24 healthy controls. Now, I want to do an in-depth exploration of this study in another video, and that video will explore what exactly post-exertional malaise really is. But today I just want to focus on the most striking finding from this study, namely that the muscles of long COVID patients are so damaged that some of those muscle fibres actually die as a result of the triggering of post-exertional malaise. So this is the relevant extract from the study. Exercise-induced myopathy in long COVID. Now myopathy means pathologies in the muscles, damage in the muscles. To further elucidate the pathophysiology of increased muscle weakness, fatigue and pain after exercise in long COVID patients, we determined whether specific pathological features were present in skeletal muscle before and after the induction of post-exertional malaise. And just skipping a sentence here. A large percentage of long COVID patients displayed small atrophic fibres and focal necrosis, which increased significantly after exercise, indicating an exacerbated tissue damage response in patients with long COVID. So I just want to explain that. What they're saying is that there were two noticeable pathologies within the muscles of long COVID patients, both before and after exercise. And that is firstly, that there were extensive signs of muscle atrophy, that is to say, wasted away muscle, as well as necrosis, that is to say, dead muscle fibres. And what they're saying is that this was the case before post-exertional malaise, and that both of these problems increased after post-exertional malaise. And in fact, in terms of the muscle atrophy, 50% of patients had this prior to a crash, while this number rose to a whopping 80% after a crash. Similarly, with the dead muscle fibres, 10% of patients experienced this before a crash, and this number rose to 36%. And so they established this by taking biopsies of the muscles from within the quadriceps, both before and after inducing post-exertional malaise in the subjects. Now, dead muscle fibres sounds pretty serious, and it is, and it's a very good example of just how serious these illnesses are. On the other hand, muscle fibre is very plastic, and so these fibres can, in fact, regenerate. And this is what was also found uh, in this paper, is that there's a significant regeneration effort amongst the muscles of long COVID patients to actually uh, build new muscle. And this makes sense, because if your body is actually um, suffering with dead muscle fibres, it's going to really be trying 
to heal that situation, even though, of course, uh, in MECFS and long COVID, the resources to do this kind of repair job are much more limited in comparison to the bodies of healthy people. So the authors continue, we conclude that severe exercise induced muscle damage and subsequent regeneration are associated with the pathophysiology of post-exertional malaise and can possibly explain muscle pain, fatigue and weakness in patients with long COVID experiencing post-exertional malaise. So why is this study so important? Well, I think that like with any study that shows a significant biomedical abnormality in illnesses like long COVID and ME-CFS, this is very important, not just for understanding the nature of these conditions, you know, improving our scientific understanding so that we can one day have better treatments, but it's also really important in order to change the attitudes of the mainstream medical profession, which, to put it mildly, tend to be rather neglectful, as well as attitudes among society at large. Studies like this tend to get significant media attention because it shows something easily understandable and yet also something that is a significant pathology. Secondly, it's also important because a lot of MECFS patients are being exposed to information that is not correct. There are a lot of popular YouTubers talking about uh, MECFS who will actually state that there is nothing wrong in the bodies of MECFS patients and that the issue is only a hypersensitive nervous system problem. I remember seeing one of these YouTubers talking about an MECFS patient that she knew and saying to him, you know, there's nothing actually wrong in your body, you know, it's just that your brain is afraid of exercising. And that then this patient went out and chopped down a tree and this YouTuber was like, oh, well, now he got it, finally. This kind of thing is ignoring the painstaking research that is going into uncovering this debilitating illness. And while, yes, there is a nervous system component to MECFS, and one that I believe can respond to neuroplastic approaches, to limit MECFS and long COVID just to that is highly negligent. And I think the other really important takeaway from this study is if you want motivation to listen to your body and to pace, what better reason for doing so could you have than to know that if you do crash, some of your muscle fibres may actually die as a result. That's how serious a crash is. And really, this is no surprise to me. Crashes feel awful. You know, you can't hardly move during them. You can be temporarily incapacitated. And for some people whose baseline is even lower, it's even worse than that. And so really, I think one of the main takeaways from this study is that crashes are in fact biologically just as bad as they feel to the patient who is experiencing them. So that's it for this video. As I said, I hope to do another video at some point looking at other findings in this study to really explain in more detail what seems to be going on during a crash. But for now, I look forward to engaging with your thoughts in the comments, what you make of this study, how it makes you think about your condition. I also have a free medical hypothesis down below about the causes of excessive thirst in MECFS, POTS and long COVID, as well as details about a consultation service that I offer for people who are interested in discussing the research with me, as well as who are interested in discussing treatments with which I am myself personally familiar such as brain retraining and others. That's it for this video and I'll see you next time.